hello and welcome to another episode of Disney Movie Investigation. If this is your first time watching, welcome to the show. On each episode, we take a look at a movie that is featured on Disney+. Plus. On this episode, we're going back to the 90s as we take a look at DuckTales the movie, The Legend of the Lost Lamp. And stay tuned for a bonus story as we take a look at the history of the Disney afternoon. And if you are enjoying these videos, I do ask that you, you please hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified with each new video. But for now, sit back and enjoy this episode of Disney Movie Investigation. So like I said, today we are covering DuckTales, the movie The Legend of the Lost Lamp. Uh, this movie was released on August 3rd, 1990, and it was directed by Bob Hathcock. Uh, the screenplay was by Alan Burnett, and it is based on the characters from DuckTales, the TV show. Uh, the production companies were Walt Disney Pictures, Disney Toon Studios, and Walt Disney Animation France, with it being distributed by Walt Disney Pictures. Uh, the budget was $20 million, and it did a box office return of $18.1 million. So in terms of the production, uh, this movie was originally tended to be a five-part uh, episode series of DuckTales, the TV show. Um, but the initial treatment uh, had the DuckTale characters seeking the Philosopher's Stone, but that was dropped. Uh, flash forward to the uh, success of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, animations stationed at the newly formed London Paris Studio uh, decided to make DuckTales the movie a theatrical feature. Uh, the Burbank studio would design the characters and storyboards before sending them to Europe to be animated. Uh, this would actually be the last Disney animated film to use cell animation. After that, they all went to the Xerox process. And because of the ever-changing script, voice recording took over a year. In addition to six months of re-recording, uh, Rip Taylor, who does the voice of the genie, said he had spent three six-hour recording sessions recording new lines. In terms of the cast, we have Alan Young, who does the voice of Scrooge McDuck. Rusi, Rusi Taylor, who does the voice of Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Webby. Terrence McGovern, who does the voice of Launchpad McQuack. Richard Limbertini, who does the voice of Dijon. Christopher Lloyd, does the voice of Murloc. Rip Taylor, does the voice of the Genie. June Foray, does the voice of Mrs. Featherby. Chuck McCainan, does the voice of Duckworth. And Joan Gerber, as the voice of Mrs. Beakley. In terms of the plot, Scrooge McDuck, his dim-witted pilot Launchpad, and his nephews Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and Webby, arrive in Egypt where Scrooge finds the lost treasure of Kali Baba. Unbeknownst to Scrooge, a magic lamp was included inside the, Trevor, the treasure, so while the nephews have fun with the genie, they all have no idea that they are being stalked by a powerful hungry sorcerer named Murloc and his dim-witted thief counterpart, Dijon. Uh, so, in terms of some trivia, initially this was thought of to be a first of a series of movies uh, with multiple sequels being planned, but after the disappointing box, box office returns, uh, further movies were cancelled. In addition, other movies that suffered because of the disappointing box office uh, returns of this movie is there was going to be a Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers movie and a Goof Troop movie, but because of the poor box office returns, the Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers movie was cancelled and the Goof Troop movie was repurposed to become the, a Goofy movie. Uh, and because of the cult-like status of this, uh, of the popularity, the soundtrack would finally be released on 2017 by Inatra Records with David Newman's original score. Uh, so in terms of recommending the movie, um, this movie will always hold a special place in my heart as it will always remind me of those good old Disney afternoon days. Uh, the movie is pretty simple, and yes, it does feel like an expanded episode of DuckTales, um, but it, it does have its charm. Uh, the story is interesting, along with great vocal performances from Alan Young, Christopher Lloyd, and Rip Taylor. Uh, the movie is a little bit dated, especially the character of Dijon. Uh, I don't think that would fly today. Uh, but the, neg the other negative, unfortunately, is it does not hold the same standard of animation as other Disney animated features, as there's some animation mistakes and um, the animation does appear a little bit choppy at times. Uh, the other negative I would say is unfortunately the climax between Scrooge McDuck and Murloc feels quite rushed. Uh, overall, I would definitely recommend this. If those especially who love the DuckTales characters, 
Um, and uh, anyone that's a fan of Disney 90s animation, it's a great, uh, great story with a simple plot. So definitely one I would recommend. Uh, so let's move on to our bonus story as we take a look at the history of the Disney Afternoon. Uh, the Disney Afternoon was a two-hour pro programming block of Disney animated TV shows. It was produced by Walt Disney Television Animation, and it was distributed by Buena Vista Distribution to syndicated channels across the United States and Canada. Uh, the history of it is once Michael Eisner became CEO of the Walt Disney Company in 1984, he would begin to push TV animated series featuring new animated, animated characters that would bring in a new generation of young fans. Eisner would set up creative meetings with Ted Stones, or Tad Stones, Jim Morgan, and Gary Geisel uh, to create a kind of some initial pitch of what these shows would be. Initial series that were pitched include a Mickey and the Space Pirates show, a Rescuers-based TV show, and Eisner was the one that pushed a pitched a Gummy Bears TV show because his kids were big fans of the Gummy Bears candy. Uh, the first two shows that were actually put in development were would be The Wuzzles and The Adventures of the Gummy Bears, and these would actually be sold to NBC and CBS for their Saturday morning cartoon block. Uh, it would be a couple years later where DuckTales would serve as the launching pad for the Disney afternoon in the fall of 1987, and Chippendale Rescue Rangers would be added in the fall of 1989. One year later, in September of 1990, Gummy Bears and Tailspin would also be added to the Disney afternoon. Uh, one of the negative, or negative depending on what you look at, uh, fallbacks of this would lead to the creation of another kid, kids programming block. Uh, DuckTales originally was being aired on Fox, and Fox executive Barry Diller was furious about the show being pulled to air on syndication, so he would respond by creating Fox Kids in retaliation. Uh, other shows that would be added to the Disney afternoon through the years included Darkwing Duck, Goof Troop, Aladdin the TV series, Bonkers, Gargoyles, The Snookums and Meat Show, and Quack Pack. Uh, so this the show lasted for a couple years, but in August of 1996, in response to declining business due to competition from Fox, Cartoon Network, and Nickelodeon, Disney established a partnership to become, with Kellogg's to become a sponsor and to purchase dedicated advertising inventory. This was internally known as the Disney Kellogg Alliance. In 1997, the Disney Afternoon was disbanded with Gargoyles moving to the Disney Channel and 101 Dalmatians, the series, being moved to ABC one Saturday morning. Um, so it lasted about a good seven years, seven to ten years. Um, in terms of the legacy of the Disney Afternoon, the, the Disney Afternoon was so popular that it actually expanded to other areas within the Disney Company. Uh, comic book strips based on the series would be featured in the Disney Adventures magazine, and characters from many of the shows would be featured in the Disney parks. Uh, the temporary land, Mickey's Birthday Land, which would later become Disney's Toontown, uh, these the Disney Afternoon characters would be featured in a daily show in 1990 called Mickey's Magical TV World, uh, as well as a temporary attraction in Fantasyland, would, in Fantasyland would be created called the Disney Afternoon Avenue. And this was a, quite a big setup because guests would actually have a map passport of Disney Afternoon Avenue and stamped at places such as Scroo Scrooge's Vault and Duckburg's City Hall. As well as there were several interactive features, they could visit Baloo, the star of Tailspin, uh, in, his, uh, in his dressing room. Uh, they could take the motorboat cruise to Gummy Glen and learn how gummy berry juice is made. They could take a spin on the Rescue Rangers Raceway, and this was the Fantasyland Autopia. Uh, as well as they could enjoy refreshments such as frozen gummy berry juice. Um, in addition to the parks, several of the characters were also featured in several uh, video games on various platforms, and this would go on right up until 2017 with the Disney Afternoon Collection. So it was very popular for us 90s kids. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us here on Disney Movie Investigation. I would invite anyone to please leave a comment of what they think of DuckTales, the movie, The Treasure of the Lost Lamb as well as what was your favorite movie of the Disney afternoon. Uh, so as we look forward to our next episode, we're going to go kind of in more of a serious uh, direction as we take a look at a documentary aftershock. And stay tuned for a bonus story as we take a look at the defunct Wonders of Life Pavilion in Epcot. So until next time, I hope you have a magical day and we will see you real soon.